Okay guys, thanks for tuning in. My call sign is Blitz and today we're having a look at the top five most annoying survivalist preppers and wannabes out there in the reality TV world. I have the list queued up right here on my laptop. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun and I figure probably, yeah, sure, there's some names on this list that you may be familiar with, some you may not be familiar with, and then there's one name on this list that you may not have ever heard of before and this person might just completely blow your mind with the level of stupidity that they engage in and currently still are. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. We'll start with number five on the list and this guy, honestly, he would make any list of this nature. So who could it be? Okay, of course, Bear Grylls has to be on this list and probably no surprise to anyone here. He's everyone's favorite hardcore survivalist. Who remembers that show, Man vs. Wild? That goes way back. That's like 2006 time frame, which was the dawn of reality TV. Yeah, if you remember that show, drop a comment down below. That was really, that show was one of the first of its kind, really, aside from Survivor Man, because it was reality TV, but with the survival twist. And the plot, if you recall, was pretty simple. Bear would get dropped off in some remote area, and then he would have to use his survival skills to navigate back to civilization. Now, this was back in the dawn of reality TV, so people actually still believed that reality TV was real. They actually thought Bear was hiking out of the remote jungle on foot, and then were shocked to discover that instead, he was in the helicopter with the film crew headed to the next film site. So there were some moments like that, you know? Uh, there was that time where, I can't remember which episode it was or which show, he's had a few of them, but you know, he was like, oh yeah, I'm surviving with just my knife and canteen, but in reality, you know, he was actually in a hotel room, you know, getting blueberry pancakes for breakfast in the morning. So uh, yeah, apparently when he wasn't guzzling down his own urine to survive, he was offset, enjoying, you know, nice dinners, cozy hotel bed, all that kind of fun stuff, which was shocking. To, should, have, should not have been shocking, I guess to really anyone but yeah maybe he figured that you know he didn't have to explain these things and the show didn't have to really explain stuff and be transparent but come on listen let's be honest here if you actually took him seriously then maybe you have the problem because as an entertainer i think he gets a high score he seems like a nice guy who just likes to do dangerous fun risky stuff but as a true survivalist with common sense skills and knowledge to impart he, he comes across as what he is, right? A flashy, scripted, survival hype man. Now, you may be thinking, yes, absolutely, I agree with you 100%. Now, a far better choice could be somebody, somebody's favorite Canadian survivalist, Les Stroud, Survivor Man, right? I'm sure you're probably thinking that, you may be, right? But there have been some rumors and some problems with him. And there, then there was the Bigfoot show, and the guy that he had on the show is not even, like, trustworthy in the Bigfoot community, which is saying a lot. And uh, yeah, and then like there was some other stuff where he had the camera pointed in one direction and looked remote, but like right behind the camera, there was a mall. So yeah, there is basically a, a very fine line between ratings and keeping it real. Moving on to Tyler Smith, also known as the Apex Predator. And who could forget this guy? That face, look at that face. When I look at that face, I see a person who is absolutely 100% probably very low IQ, but also arrogant, which makes them dangerous. This is the look of a person who's just so mentally challenged that they're not really knowing that they're mentally challenged at all. And here's why. This self-proclaimed apex predator had this foolproof plan for shit hit the fan survival when he decided to share with the world our doomsday preppers. So instead of maybe like, you know, how you do or I do, we stockpile, we prep, we, you know, build community, we network. His plan was to raid and terrorize his neighbors when shit hit the fan. I'm not joking. Stealing their weapons, food, and valuables. And look at that. I mean, look, look at those size 3060 boobies. Don't you feel terrorized already? I know I did. Because like, listen, seriously, when I saw that episode, I was like, man, this guy just strikes me as a person who thinks very highly of themselves, but has no skills or reason to think that. They have these delusions of grandeur, like this MMA fight, probably his first and only MMA fight ever. I mean, who does that and comes out with that cheap shot? Did you see that here? Hold on. Look, right there. All right, they go to tab gloves and he swings on him. So yeah, um, whatever. 
Needless to say, sharing your felonious plans on national TV gets lots of attention, and it was soon uncovered that he was a felon and a pedophile. So for him, shit did hit the fan, but I guess not quite in the way that he imagined. So good old Jordan Jarub, I think I'm saying that right. He is a local legend. He's kind of like out of place in this list because he wasn't actually on reality TV, but he should have been, okay? So this guy, you know, started up his own little militia and, you know, started to try to build, build up a crew and a following and a hype about himself, I guess. So he figured the best way to do that was to make a blog about himself writing in the third person as a concerned citizen. So, you know, for example, uh, this concerned citizen expressed concern about the radical nature and tactics demonstrated by Mr. Jarub and his, you know, high speed, uh, you know, ninja assault force, right? Uh, the concerned citizen also, check this out, managed to obtain nudes of Jordan's super hot girlfriend. It's pretty crazy, right? Doing some honeypot operations, okay? Now, listen, you might think that somebody like this would, would you know, not be able to attract any followers. No, he did. And from his mom's base, he uh, started to call for secession from the state of Florida, uh, fed posts in all over the place, you know, online and in real life. Uh, I believe also calling up local Tallahassee government and uh, some maybe threatening the governor, something like that. And uh, yeah, basically um, just, just put himself out there until the feds do what the feds do. So yes, of course, you might think and agree with me that uh, lying to the cops that a mass murderer was a member of your militia was pretty damn dumb and worthy of just an arrest just based on your absolute stupidity. But maybe in, 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 in the thoughts of self-promotion, this was the most genius manipulation of the press in history. You decide, think about it, right? Now, meanwhile, it's rumored that he's still looking for donations for the canteen. You know, you know he gets hungry in there. He, he's only, I mean, he'll do a lot. I hear he'll do a lot for a, for a bag of Cheetos. Hey guys, it's, uh, it's Jordan Jarrett. If I look like shit, it's because the last couple of years of my life have kind of been shit. But much like Julian Assange, I'm stuck inside of a sort of luxurious limbo to where I'm in my family's vacation home and I'm not allowed to leave. <laughs> I had thought, honestly, that reality survival TV had hit rock bottom, and then out comes Prepper Castle. At first, and I'll be honest with you, and some other people thought the same, I was convinced that based on the fake tans and makeup, these people were actually like bit actors from Jersey Shore. But it comes to find out this guy and his family are apparently really actually real people, and he was quite serious about building this giant eyesore. Now, if you are like me and you're thinking that an actual castle is a terrible idea and this total violation of OPSEC, you would be correct. Because obviously, think about it, when shit hits the fan, do you want everybody to know that you're the man? The prepper with the gear and the guns? I mean, think about it. The apex predator might just come knocking in his homemade body armor, right? But anyways, Needless to say, nobody even had to wait until shit hit the fan to find out if a prepper castle, a literal castle, was a bad idea. The castle and where it's at, no one is to know that. He basically banished me from the family. The show aired, just, you know, locals thought like, hey, maybe we can find this place, you know? So some people broke in. They had some pretty high tech security get through, which uh, took a crowbar. But they ransacked the castle, carrying off God knows who knows what. And the last time I checked, the castle was unfinished, and if I'd have a guess, probably home to local vagrants and animals, which is sad because this guy obviously invest, invested, you know, money in the land and the building process and the construction and all that. And just to see it go to waste like that, kind of sucks. Of course, we can't forget about all the scandals from reality survival TV. Dave Canterbury comes to mind because he's rumored to have pumped up his resume for his show on uh, or his um, appearance on Dual Survival, and he got fired as a result. So, did that actually? I'm not trying to be funny here, but did that make the show Solo Survival? Did it actually become Solo Survival? I don't know. I'm too lazy to Google it right now. But anyways, um, obviously the Discovery Channel needed somebody else so the show could be Dual Survival. And so who do they pick? Joe Teddy seems like a good a good choice. But who actually, unironically enough, 
lied about his military service as well, and apparently even worse than Dave did. <sighs> Which is sad. Zero integrity here, and I just, I don't know, it's always interesting to see what people will do when there's some money on the line and, you know, fame and fortune. For me personally, I would rather not get the job and keep my integrity. Thank you very much. And in general, guys and gals, it's just best to steer clear of the armchair commandos, the braggers, and those whose actions don't line up with their big talk. And trust me, there's quite a few in this subculture. Okay, yep, that is all I have on the list, guys, but I'm sure I've forgotten some really juicy stories that have, like, popped up over the years. Because let's face it, these people are a dime a dozen. They pop up, it's like a flash in the pan, you see them, and they're illuminated, and they're like, oh my god, how could this person think that was appropriate? Or how could you be this stupid? And then you realize that people that stupid are the actual reason why the FBI exists. So, um, yeah. Leave a comment down below with some names that might come to mind that kind of fit this annoying wannabe and fraudulent profile of a prepper and survivalist, and I'll see you next time. Oh, yeah, and real quick, before you head out the door, please check the Survival Outpost out on Gab and Rumble. See you next time, and thanks for watching. Hey, you still there? Cool. Then don't forget to check out our website located on the interwebs at thesurvivaloutpost.com. We are designed and optimized for hard use, for the self-reliant who talk less and hustle more. Thanks to our international connections, you get first access to unique and innovative products from around the world. This is the gear that will give you that edge you need in a survival situation, or if you're just trying to keep the lights on when the power goes out. Any content mentioned in this video is linked up down there in the pin post, and be sure to watch the suggested videos for more real-world survival training and knowledge.